around the world, teams of researchers are attempting to reverse engineer a human brain. It's a tough job, because for all our research, the brain is still the most complicated instrument in the known universe. But mapping the brain could take decades to complete, which is why some rebel scientists have decided to harness the firepower inside living brain cells. They're trying to crack the secrets of the soul by fusing biology and technology, taking bits of brain and mating them to bits of hardware. Most computer simulations are limited to very simplistic neurons. What we have here in our culture dishes uh, with real live wet squishy neurons with all their complexity is immensely much more complicated than anything we can simulate on today's computers. Professor Steve Potter of the Georgia Institute of Technology designs and builds brains. Brains that are half living, half machine. Potter's team takes neurons cultured from rat embryos then grows them on miniature plates of electrodes. Here is a multi-electrode array culture dish. You can see some fluorescently labeled neurons growing on it. These are the electrodes uh, with leads heading off to the um, electronics that we use to record from and stimulate the cells. These are all the axons and dendrites that represent the connections between the cells. Those connections form over the course of the first four hours in culture, you can see in this time lapse here, connections forming. So those are the synaptic connections by which the neurons talk to each other, and we can film that conversation in progress using a calcium sensitive dye here. So here you can see the cells flashing. Every time the cell sends a signal to another cell, it has a little burst of calcium. When the brain has grown, Potter sends information to it through the electrodes, and the brain responds. Those electrodes are connected to a computer that's wired up to a robot body, resulting in a new form of life. This is a hybrid, a robot controlled by living brain tissue. Its brains are in a refrigerator, but you can see its neurons react on the computer screen as its body finds its way around the lab bench. Like any animal, the hybrid has experiences and learns from them. In this case, how to navigate its environment. So the question is, could a hybrid ever become conscious? Whether or not we could ever get to uh, conscious cultured networks is a question which I would say we've already answered yes. We have culture dishes that are receiving inputs from the environment. They're responding to them in complicated ways. So they're conscious of their environment in some very rudimentary fashion, perhaps with more complicated interactions between different brain tissues and between the computer and the brain tissues. We could get to something that people would say is a high level cognition, more like human consciousness. But if one day a hybrid or a computer wakes up and realizes what and who it is, if a soul emerges from those wires, how would we know? We'll have to rely on conversation. If we ask the artificial brain, are you conscious, and it persuades us that it is, we'll just have to take its word. But the same thing applies when we talk to other humans. We don't actually know that other people are conscious. They might just be zombies who are saying the right thing, but having no private, subjective experience. I can put um, some sort of an artificial intelligence into a computer right now that represents the kind of decisions I might make and has, in some sense, some of my consciousness in it. So that's not hard to do, but to get something that we would say is a good enough copy of my consciousness that um, if it were put back in somebody else's body, people would be fooled into thinking it was me. This is something we haven't even the first clue of how to do it uh, in any kind of a detailed way. Building artificial homes for our souls may be a long time.